This week on Nintendo Main, we got plenty of news for you. We got Black Friday deals, and I played a lot of Pokemon. And Zelda 2 still kicking my ass. It's hard. <laughs> Episode 47. We are your hosts. Myself, 47. 47. We are your hosts, Trey Johnson and Jeremy McCaskey. Jeremy Zelda 2 Master McCaskey. <laughs> Jeremy, episode 47 McCaskey. <laughs> so here we are uh, on bringing you our happy Thanksgiving episode, even though it's not really about Thanksgiving, but it's Thanksgiving week. So we're here to talk Have to a big you heap about... and helping of Nintendo Maine. Yeah, this we're good. Thanksgiving. We tell, we'll tell you all the. All the Black Friday deals and stuff like that and other fun things. We've already lost everybody. Right here. Yeah, so you can <laughs> leave your family. Yeah, Just leave your family at the table and go buy these things Black Friday. Well. Which yeah. is actually Thursday. <laughs> it's Friday. Unless you want to wait out, start waiting outside on Thursday. Which some people might. So uh, let's do news. Let's do news first. News, man. Always start with news. Always start with the news. So, like, there's been a whole lot of rumors and stuff this week. I don't know. I'm not sure where to start here. Uh, I heard that Zelda has a delay. Is what we heard? Possibly. Uh, yeah, tar- that it might be. Well, supposedly Target released a... Uh, there were, there was a thing. Somebody found something online where Target basically said that it came out in June. Is where is where it came from. And there's also been rumblings about people saying that Zelda may not be a launch title. That really doesn't surprise me. They delay those games like crazy. Yeah. But supposedly and somebody... pushing it back a couple months, it's whatever. Yeah. I mean, I heard people saying that they thought it was going to be like a holiday game. Which would be funny if like they really don't release anything for the Wii U. And then it's just like, here's this game. Like a year after we said we were gonna not going to re- release anything. So, I don't know. I hope that that still comes out. I hope that Wii U version still comes out. I read a rumor somewhere that they were going to release a Mario Golf for Wii U also. That was another thing that somebody said. That there were like more Wii U stuff coming out, or at least there was one more game coming out. Which who? Knows oh right, and did, didn't it say something about a Mario Galaxy HD or a, yeah, Mario Galaxy HD collection or something? Uh, I saw yeah, somebody said a uh, Mario Sunshine HD for Switch with uh, which I think we talked about it last week. Yeah, because that would be with with the um, whatever the new game is, and that would that would mean that their triggers are analog. Which they could be. I don't know. They look. They, they might be analog. Somebody released like a list of games, you know, that were going to come out for it, and they're basically all like games that are already out. <laughs> so they'd pretty much have the same launch as PlayStation Four, <laughs> where it's like let's just release the same games again until we get something. Oh, new, and also you know. like uh, ports of Wii U games. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like it's mostly it's mostly Wii U games is what I saw on this supposed list of the launch titles. I think the only new game was like Mario. And somebody said, "Did you see did you see the rumor like this is like almost too ridiculous to not be true." But uh the rumor about the Mario Rabbids game coming from Ubisoft and it's going to be a RPG. Did you see that? No. Yeah, somebody said that uh that um Ubisoft was going to was going to release a game that that's like their big game that they were talking about is a Rabbids, you know, the fucking annoying Rabbids from a Wii the the crazy rabbits yeah. that are all like you know special and their eyes like go different directions and all that the raving rabbits yeah the raving rabbits yeah report Ubisoft developing rabbits in Mario crossover RPG for Switch launch day that was reported like last week the supposedly reported whatever but it's like such a weird rumor that it's almost got to be true right I mean who would make that up I mean I guess it's like Ubisoft they made this game for Wii way back when maybe they'll make another one. So but, do you think it's like a crossover or it's like the Rabbids are just in Mario's universe as the different characters? Well, it says that the working title is Mario RPG: colon, Invasion of the Rabbids. <laughs> so oh. yeah, so yeah it'd be exactly what you said <laughs> that uh, the Rabbids are invading Mario's universe. I don't know. He's got to take care of them. I guess. I mean, if it's a, if it's a cool RPG, then maybe you know, it's just it's just interesting. I mean, it's just so weird that like that's got to be real, right? I've seen I've seen weirder stuff. I mean, supposedly the ultimate edition of Devil's Third was supposed to be a launch title too, way back when. So you know, people predicted that too. 
I don't know. It's just another ridiculous rumor that it's like now now that it got launched, people are like, oh, here's more stuff. And like, right, I think it was on the same day that somebody said that. Uh, Eurogame also said that uh, there was going to be a Pokemon version on one Switch as well. There's going to be a third version called Pokemon, oh, right. Pokemon Stars, which was supposedly in development at the same time as Sun and Moon. And it'll come out like next and year. It's, yeah, it's like the Pokemon Yellow of this generation. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it, I guess. Because the Pokemon Company did say that they were making games for Switch earlier, but they didn't say what it was. I mean, that's I mean that that's cool, I guess, but nobody should wait on that. <laughs> if you're waiting on that, I don't know. I bought I bought Pokemon like on the day at midnight, so I didn't wait on it. But some people are like, "Oh, wait for the Switch one." It's like, well, you you know, you should buy it anyway. You know, unless you don't have a 3DS, I guess. But I mean, it'd be cool to play it at home. But I'm not going to wait a year to play the game, you know, before it comes out then. Yeah, you can play the game for pretty cheap because you could probably get a used 2DS at this point for really cheap. Yeah, and I think, um, well, we're going to get into the Black Friday deals later, but I think it, I think there was a Pokemon deal in there somewhere. I know the older ones were in there, like the X and Y and Omega Ruby and Sapphire. Those were those were on sale. And there was one, um, there's one that I remembered because it's going to tell you because uh, if you wanted to get into those Disney Infinities, you can buy starter packs for $10 for Toys R Us if you wanted to play it on your Wii U. You, you can do it for super cheap. Oh, anyway. what's, like starter packs of the different franchises or whatever? Yeah, the starter pack is basically the game. It's like what you need to play the game. So like Infinity 3.0, the Star Wars one, is basically, it's a starter pack. It's like Anakin and Ahsoka and like the disc and the scanner thing. It's basically what it is. And it comes with like, you know, that Star Wars version. And then you can buy another, you can buy another thing, another story and put it on there and do that. But if you wanted to play the game, you can play it for 10 bucks now. You get it. It comes with two figures. It comes with the scanning thing, and it comes with the actual game. It's the cheapest way to play it if you want to try it out. You get it for ten dollars. Toys R Us. And if they're still doing the, I'll have to check it out. They're still doing the buy one get one three. You could get three free. You could get four other ones too if you want it. But that'd be the best way to try it out. <laughs> I mean, it's super cheap. Buy the game and then three other sets. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Starters. Uh, the yeah starter set is basically what you need to start the game. That'd be what you get. So that's pretty cool. Well, uh, last time I was at Walmart. They still had a ton of them, so yeah, they got to be everywhere still. I'm sure they're still here. I mean, <laughs> Toys R Us seems to be really trying to unload them. Yeah, what I saw for this list that somebody that somebody put up was like, was it Day One, New Mario, Mario Rabbids RPG, Splatoon, Splatoon Port, the Skyrim game, Just Dance 2017. It's like that kind of sucks as a lineup. I mean, I have if Mario Rabbids is great, <laughs> then the yeah, Mario and 3D Mario cool but then it's like first six months smash brothers already out zelda you know breath of the wild that's cool uh mario kart 8 port xenoblade chronicles x port mario maker port most of them are games that i already have but i guess that would make sense if they're gonna do that and then they're like 2017 pokemon stars pikmin 4 and beyond good and evil (laughs) remake in 2018 is what it says so i'm sure that list is wrong but oh it's a repeat yeah, that's what they that's what they're saying. They think it's going to be whoever that person was thought that it was going to be like a exclusive to the system, which that would be kind of crazy. But at this point, who knows? Oh, I, I read there was an interview with the uh, director of Skyrim too. I don't know if you saw that or not. Oh yeah, where he he didn't so much confirm that the game was coming out, but he made it sound like he would love for the game to be out for the Switch. Because didn't he say something along the lines of that's the same game? on the TV and they still haven't really confirmed that, that that game is actually coming to switch. He just says that he really likes the system and he thinks it's cool, but yeah, nobody's really straight up said like, Oh, that's Skyrim, but everybody keeps saying that's Skyrim. So it's kind of weird how, how they're still being, maybe, maybe they're supposed to wait until like January or whatever, wait for the actual direct. To right. Come out. Cause it, maybe it's going to be a launch title. That's important. Yeah. Well, if there's a new Mario game at launch, I mean, well, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you really need. And if that rabbit thing is true, you'll have two. <laughs> I mean, a Mario RPG at launch would be pretty great. I don't know. That seems like such a bizarre thing, though, but who knows? I mean, we still, what do we have? We have like two months before we find out, so we should find out soon. Supposedly, Paul W.S. Anderson is going to be making a series of Monster Hunter movies, is what I heard. I read like an interview with him, so it seems to be it seems to be that he actually has it which would make sense because uh he made all those awful Resident Evil movies for Capcom and Monster Hunter is a Capcom property so i mean maybe they were like hey you made us money on these bad movies that you made before why don't you make another bad movie 
see if we can make money. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't think they said it like that, but <laughs> that's, that's how the conversation plays out in my head. So being like, hey, those Resident Evil movies you made sucked. Uh, why don't you do this? Yeah, there's a part that he said on here that's like so not true about Resident Evil because he's like, what I love about Monster Hunter is the incredibly beautiful, immersive world they've created. It's on the level of like a Star Wars movie in terms of cre- world creation. There's like no real central characters, so it's a bit like when we first approached Resident Evil and made our own characters and story on that world, which is like, <laughs> I mean, I understand that for Monster Hunter, but saying that Resident Evil has no has like no main characters is kind of like stupid, <laughs> you know. But that explains like what he did with that movie because he never really. I mean, I guess, like, they had some, some key characters in it later, but I know that first movie, like, there was no Jill or Chris or Claire or, or Leon or any of those guys. You know, there's no none of the main fucking people at all in it. There's, like, all these characters that never appeared in any of the games. Yeah, true, Monster Hunter doesn't really have any main characters. It's more about the monsters, and you make your own character. But, yeah, I just thought that quote was funny. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, that's not true about Resident Evil, but it's true about Monster Hunter. But he sounds excited about making it, uh... Hopefully the monsters don't look like super awful, awfully CGI and all that, but they probably will, you know, because they're probably going to want to make the game they cheaply. They probably will. I mean, they're going to ma- want to make them cheaply, you know, so they can make money back on it. Because there's not really... Oh, and he also, in the same interview, he also went on to say that he's pretty sure he can make a lot of money in China and Japan on this. He didn't say anything about being successful here, which, you know, I guess is at least he's being realistic about it, right? Yeah, he said if you do the math, the movie could could potentially be the biggest of the year in China and Japan where people line up around the box when new games are released. Cause that seems to be a thing nowadays for like, uh, what was it? Um, the world of Warcraft movie, which sucked did really well in Japan or not in Japan. It did really well in China. So they still made their money back, but it still didn't really, didn't really perform well here, but enough people saw it in the, in the other countries. So I guess that's what he's setting his sights on. So I don't know because they love Warcraft more than we do. Apparently they do. There's more <laughs> people there that love it. Are here. That's what I There's heard. Quite a few people in China. Yeah, I heard that that some of them like make create make characters and sell them to Americans. I think I think I heard that <laughs> somewhere, and that's why they like them more. So, but a lot of people do play it. Oh, and a lot of people do that. What you just said, what, where they'll create characters, yeah, and do all the work and then sell the characters. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I've I've talked to people who like made money selling like sell, selling weapons in Diablo. You know, Diablo two. Like I, I remember, I had friends that did that. So I mean, it's you do you can do stuff like that, especially on the PC stuff. Well, I guess World of Warcraft is on PC. But. Maybe I'll start playing Warcraft now that I have a PC. You, you got a, a, a you have a new PC in the way, so maybe we'll, maybe our podcast will sound will sound different, and then on our next episode or episode after. So we're, we're, yeah, we're moving on moving on up, work, right? Moving on up into. As we get into our maybe maybe on our episode fifty, that'll be it. It'll be the one that has the has the computer and all that. The super HD quality episode. Super, That's what it's gonna be called. Super HD. There were some cool games that came out last week. Oh yeah, episode fifty. Super HD. Super HD. Calling it. Just like I called that, there's gonna be a new president elected. <laughs> yeah, that you didn't call that it was gonna be a super villain though, but. Who knew that, really? On the brighter side of things, there were some cool games that came out last week on Virtual Console. Excite Bike 64 on, uh, was, uh, came out for Wii U. And Wario Land Shake It. I don't know if you played that game. The, uh, the I hand- didn't, but I heard, I've heard good things about it. Oh yeah, it's the hand-drawn animated one. It looks gorgeous. It's like all, like, cartoon. It's, it's all hand-drawn. And I remember that was a whole thing because that game was in 4x3 in an HD world and people were all throwing a fit about that, but. I understand. They said that it was harder to do because all the levels were hand drawn and it was hard to like switch the frames or whatever. But the game is super gorgeous, regardless, oh. and, and a lot of fun to play. And there was a really funny SNL skit that came out of it, which had a, uh, which basically had like people making, you know, pretending that they're jerking off with a Wii while they played that game. I don't know if you remember that skit, but it was pretty, it was pretty funny. I only saw it because it had Nintendo stuff in it, but you know, at least they got they got it some up in your feed. They got some some advertisement for it. Yeah, probably, maybe. I don't know. It was such a such a long time ago that I don't think I was even on Facebook then. When Warrior Land Shake It came out, I think I just found it. Or I think I just saw it through IGN or something. I don't know. Or maybe I just heard about it and, and YouTubed it. Was that an early Wii game? Uh, well, Warrior Land Shake It was a later Wii game. It was towards the end, I think. Of uh, Wii. It was in that time when they had all those really good games. Like it was around the time of like, well, they. I mean, they always had a lot of good games, but. 
It was around the time of like Kirby's Epic Yarn, I think, when it was like kind of towards like the second big wave of good games, like almost yeah. before the end. You know, where they, they, there was a time where they like had an E3 where they announced like a bunch of stuff that they had. And they're like, oh, this is all coming out in like the next month. And it was like in those, I think. But uh, yeah, that game was really fun. Like, I, I have a copy of it and I've, and I played it and it's, it's cool. It looks, it looks really good. Like I got it because of the, you know, because of how the hand, how hand drawn it is. And it's super gorgeous and it's a lot of fun to play. So. If you like the old WarioWare games, or the old Wario Land games on, like, Game Boy, I totally recommend it. It's a lot of fun. I don't know what it's going I do for like on. Games, I, don't, I don't know what it's going for online. It's probably less than 20, but, you know, 20 is the standard for the Wii games now, so that's what you have. There was a 2D game that came out, too, that looked cool, that, like, uh, the side-scroller game that kind of looked Metroid-ish. It was a... Uh, it was an X-Seed game. Yeah, Exile's End. Or, no, that, came, that comes out this way. Oh, week. I saw that in the shop. Yeah. Yeah, that, that game sounded cool. Like I kind of wanted to play that. Yeah, they said it was uh, inspired by like '80s Japanese science fiction films and anime, and I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. That looks sounds like something I want to play. So that sounds cool. Maybe I'll check that out. It's only like ten bucks. Oh, then yeah, there's a Swap Doodle came out also, the sequel to uh, what was the other one? Flip uh, Flip Note Studio. I guess they they yeah, made Flip a new Notes. version of that that's free on 3ds that you can download. So if you want to drop? Have you downloaded it? I have not downloaded it yet. No. I should, though. My memory is, like, so out of whack that I haven't, you know, I, I was afraid that it might be too large, I guess. I don't know. I was afraid of what, how, how big it was. Cause I ended up deleting Xenoblade Chronicles 3D to make oh. room, to make room for Pokemon. Cause I didn't have any memory on my 3DS and I can't seem to get my 128 gig card to work. So, yeah. And Pokemon was, uh, how big of a file is that? Uh, I think it was like 28,000 notes or something like that. I mean, it's, it was, it was roughly the same size as, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. That's why, I, that's why I deleted that. Cause I think, uh, cause it, that Xenoblade was a little bit bigger, but it's, it's pretty much the same size. Which I don't know what, what is that, like a gig, I think, in 3DS world? A note? No, I mean the, I don't, I, I read somewhere that Xenoblade Chronicles 3D was like their biggest game, or like had the most space on it for, oh yeah, I think for the, um, it was a card. huge pile on the Wii U, also. Oh sure, yeah. Chronicles well, X. Well, oh yeah, yeah. Well, the Chronicles X was like fifty gigs, right? <laughs> Something like that. Well, if you wanted to download all the extra stuff to make it move smoother, I find it weird that because they said they might like re. Oh, we mentioned it earlier, but they might like re-release it on Switch. I find that it cool. may deserve a second chance for yeah. all the people that don't have Wii U's. Yeah, speak of Switch. Speaking yeah, I think of, a lot, I think a lot of the games do deserve a second chance. Yeah, it seems like they all are because. Uh, I read that um, Lego City Undercover is getting a Switch release also, and that's an actual that's an actual one. That's like a that's not a rumor. That's it is actually coming out on Switch, and it's also coming out on PS4. So they they switched it over to both of them, which is so late in the game. But Switch. why not? I guess if you haven't got people will buy it if they want it. Did you get the Wii U one of that? No, not yet. Oh, okay, it's on the selects now. Though. It's like twenty bucks, right? Yeah, get it now before it's released for 60 bucks on Switch. With new Switch modes. Switch between modes. I, I found a big list of Black Friday stuff for Nintendo systems. I think it's the official one. There's some stuff of note. Like, of course, there's the $100 3DS, new 3DS, which I'm wondering how, how hard that's gonna be able to, that's gonna be defined. I mean, I know like a lot of people have 3DSs, but the, the $150 one, I mean, we talked about it on the show, was pretty hard to find. Like, it took you a while before you could get before you got yours, right? Before you found it in the wild? It did, but now I've seen them. I see them around. Still. Well, now you do, but I mean, when they came out on the day, like this one's releasing on Black Friday, so I think if you're trying to find it on Black Friday, you may not be able to find it. That's what I'm saying. It might take a little bit. It might take oh, some right. weeks before what I have you see was it a, like in the wild. Old Black Friday. But there's some there's some pretty decent game prices I saw on here. Splatoon's 35 on uh, Walmart. I'll just go down the list. I know you keep talking about or toying with the idea of buying that. Was the deal online cheaper than that, or was it more for Splatoon? I think I still am going to save more money if I use birthday. Oh, okay. Because I thought you said it was like... Yeah, because there's one. There's like a physical copy you can get for 35 but it's the birthday thing less oh, than that. Oh, okay. No, it would be 48 Yeah. No, it would be 42 Yeah, so you can get it for less at Walmart on Black Friday, Splatoon. Yep, and you have a physical copy of it. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just go down the list here. Super Mario Maker is forty dollars at Toys R Us. Pikmin three fifteen dollars at Walmart. NES Remix Pack fifteen dollars Walmart. Minecraft twenty dollars Toys R Us. Pokemon Tournament oh sweet thirty five Target. There's the Disney Infinity Starter okay. Packs which I talked about earlier uh, ten dollars at Toys R Us. Uh, Lego Dimension Starter Pack 
$39 Walmart, $40 Best Buy GameStop, Target Toys R Us, and Fred Meyer. Who is Fred Meyer? Uh, <laughs> Lego Dimension Fun Park, Fun Packs. That's an agent. $10 Target, 3 for 20 Toys R Us. There's a lot of Lego Dimension stuff on here. I haven't played any of those, but those are all on sale at different places. I'm not going to go through all of those. Um, you can get Lego Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens for $20 at Overstock, though. I don't know where that is. Um, I think that's a website. Oh, okay. Because I, cause I was like, you know, I I didn't really care for the movie, but I heard the game's fun. I was like, I might get it for $20. You get Mighty Number no. 9 for $15 at GameStop. Get a Just Dance for 25 at Best Buy. I don't know why you'd buy that, but you get that. Tumblestone, oh. I don't know what that is. That's $20 at Toys R Us. But it's a Wii U game, apparently. But there, there's the Wii U deals for Black Friday. You can get a Fire Emblem. So do they have the uh, NES Classic in the ad? Or you're just looking at a comprehensive list, aren't you? Oh, I'm just I'm just looking at a I'm just looking at GameSpot's uh, Black Friday list for Nintendo that they put up. It was like a list that they put together with their, with everything on it. It's not yeah. Somebody else looked at the ads for me. You know, like if you go to like Cheap Ass Gamer and it just shows you a list of all the stuff available. It's like that except GameStop. All the cheap ass games. Uh, 3DS games. You can buy Fire Emblem Fates Birthright for twenty five. That's a pretty good deal. Thought about that. That is a good deal. Smash Brothers 3DS 25. Oh, that's a Best Buy, by the way. The Fire Emblem is Best Buy. Smash Brothers $25 is a Target. Pokemon X and Y 25 bucks Target. You can buy Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Mega Ruby for $25 at Target. Um, Kirby Planet Robobot 25 bucks Target. That's another good deal. New Super Mario Brothers 2 15 dollars Target. Sonic Boom Fire and Ice 30 dollars GameStop. Uh, Star Wars Force Awakens. For 3DS, fifteen dollars at GameStop. You can also buy the eight bit Mario Amiibos for five dollars at Walmart. Either one, the modern or the retro one. And uh, wow, I think, that, I think that's it. No, uh, no bundles, which is weird. But I guess they haven't really had bundle deals in a while. I don't know what they did last year, but when I bought the Wii U, mine was a bundle. I don't know. I'm surprised they don't do any Wii oh, U right. deals, especially since uh, I don't know. Especially since they've discontinued the Wii U now, which we didn't mention last week, but. Nintendo officially said that they're that they maybe March is just too close to like try to sell a bunch of Wii U's now like they might piss people off. Yeah, but I mean, why? I don't understand why they don't just cut the price and just try to just try to unload what they have like through this holiday. You know, I mean, the Wii has a lot of good games on it. Like, yeah, cut the price and like do like a Zelda set that comes with like Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. You know, it's It's, like one fifty or something. Yeah. Like cut the price down and like and sell it with a couple games and I think you could get people to get it, you know? Maybe actually I think last year was it last year was the Splatoon and uh Yeah, last year was the Splatoon and Smash Brothers bundle that came out for Christmas, so. Cause I think my mom bought one <laughs> at that time. But uh yeah, I don't know. I mean oh, if right. I was if I was them I'd drop it I'd drop it to like a hundred hundred like a buck fifty and throw a couple games in there and just try to just try to unload what they have, you know. I don't know. I thought about getting another one just in case mine breaks. But if they if they would make them cheaper, I'd maybe get another one. I don't know. I like my Wii U. I don't, I don't want it to. I don't want it to break and have a backup or something. But yeah, that's oh that, right that's, because eventually we won't be able to get these game pads anymore. Yeah, well, that's, they're not. They're just they're not making them anymore. So, what's going to happen if they don't sell? Like, is it going to become like I don't know? I'm afraid it's going to become like maybe a rare, more rare thing. I don't know. They should just drop sure the price will. and get people to buy them. I don't know. I'm just looking into the future, you know, of the possibility have have it eventually being hard to buy or something like that. Just like the Virtual Boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like the Virtual Boy, except it did not like, I mean, it lasted a lot more years than the Virtual Boy did. The uh, I heard the, well, I listened to the Retronauts episode about it, but apparently the Virtual Console turned 10. It's 10 years old. Did you know that? Oh, wow. No, I didn't. Yeah. That makes sense, though. 2006 was the year we came out. Yeah. It's been the 10 Wii. years since the Wii. The Wii's 10 years old, too. We should do a Wii game episode. Like, Got I would you. love to. Because I have a lot. There's a lot of, like, weird hidden gem Wii game stuff that I really like that we should talk about. Like, especially, like, I already know what I would talk that about. That we should talk about. That we should talk about, yeah. Like, uh, I do, like, Mad World and like and, like, No More Heroes or something like that. Especially Mad World. I've been wanting to play that game again. It's such a weird... Final Fight type game where you can stick multiple street signs in somebody's head. Lots of fun. Had a great soundtrack too. But yeah, yeah. I have that game. I haven't really. Oh, you, I mean, you can beat it in like an hour. It's uh it's like I said, it's like a, it's like an arcade brawler. Like you can play it, you can beat it, you can go through it in no time. So it'd be like a really good, really easy game to do a thing about because 
you can you can get through, you can basically see all it has to offer in, in about a day, which was disappointing because I bought it at full price and played through it really quickly. But it's super unique for what it is. It's just not very long, you know. It's just not not a whole lot to do with it, you know, just because of the nature of what it is. this week have you bought anything new have you bought any new games this week or are you still um, playing zelda i'm still playing zelda 2 still kicking my ass as i said at the top um yeah, yeah even with the save states even with the save states this game's tough so how how I, far I missed... like how far are you like i'm not i'm really not familiar with zelda 2 very much at all like how many like are you like are there's like i'm sure there's levels right like are you on like level two like level three like dungeon two i don't know i'm on my way to the third dungeon Pretty much, I can't remember how many castles there. Are. I'll, I'll have to look it up. But according to one walkthrough I looked at, I went to the third castle, and now I'm going to the, the second one. You know, I went out of order. Oh, sure. I, mean, so you, sure. I have like the uh, life spell that was the best thing I've gotten recently, and the hammer, that, that dang hammer. Oh yeah, because you have to you have to use it to break something, right? Probably to get to the next thing. Don't you have to break a wall with that or something like that with a hammer? Well, the hammer is a good thing to get. Yeah, the hammer is a good thing to get because it gives you a shortcut from the beginning of the game. Like, if you lose all your lives, you can get back to where you were quicker. Yeah, you caves and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. Like, I remember there being something you important also do, about the. But you hammer. also need the hammer to get to one of the palaces. That's what I'm on my way of getting right now. Yeah, yeah. Like how you need the you need the you get, like I. You need like a flame at one point, right? You need like a candle to get to another part. That's earlier in the game. Yeah, yeah. You need I got a torch. Can- yeah, candle, uh, some kind of statue or something. One person wanted. I found someone's mirror under a table. I mean, I'm I've done some stuff. Um, I gave a letter to a guy so I could cross a bridge. <laughs> well, there you I go. To get that letter from the woods. Yeah, I mean, I've had a good time. I, I went through some swamps. I fought. So these guys that I'm fighting right now, they're kicking my ass. Are these uh, dudes that run straight at you? And they're throwing axes at you while they run out. They like take away a bunch of damage. Yeah. They cause a lot of damage. And they they move quick, and you have to hit them kind of like the uh, the knights, where you have to like jump and like hit them in the right spot for the block you hit. Do you do you have the down stab yet? No, I want it so bad. That's a game yeah. changer once you get that. That's what I hear. My first experience with Zelda Two was, uh, you know, I had a sleepover at a friend's house when I was when I was you know a kid, and they had just they had just gotten the down stab, and they were, it was like these two brothers that that i knew they they just found the down stab and they're like so excited about it and i like didn't even know anything about what that game was that they were playing but <laughs> they were like yeah we got the down stab i'm like cool you can down it's gonna make fight now. slimes a lot easier like yeah well, i think it makes it makes everything easier because you can kind of fight them like mario now yep. and you you can level up in that game too right like what's like what's your level like what level are you at well, that, for your character that's the thing so i kind of level like five i think on across the board it could, because i can't you can grind it's easier to grind with the save states so that's a good part about that oh okay it's easier to grind because what it's easy to die probably while you're grinding is that what you mean like it's easier with is that why it's easier with save states well you lose all your experience points if you lose all your lives oh, so the idea each actually... time is to use your state save states to try not to run out of your three lives and then lose all your experience points and then have to go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, because then that's the ending with the uh, where Ganon laughs at you, and it says, "Yeah, right." It's like that red screen with him, and it's like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, and I'd have to look yeah. to make sure this number's right, but I think there might only be like something like five extra lives in the game that you can pick up. Oh, okay, and uh, you can only pick them up one time. So this game is not very forgiving with the amount of chances you have to get no, through just, a certain section. Yeah. It is not. That's I've I've only it, like especially hard. Yeah, I only played it a little bit when there was that GameCube disc that had all the Zelda games on it. I played it a little bit on that, and I think I only made it through the first dungeon when I was playing it because I was because I got frustrated with it real easy. But at least that had a save mode on it. You know, that was the first time it had had sort of a file save type thing 
in it. But yeah, I've never really dedicated time to playing that. I'm, I, I will eventually, you know, with the NES Classic. But I've been I've been mostly just focusing on Final Fantasy One for me. So oh, so that's the game you're you're uh, playing through right now. Yeah, that's the game I've been trying to get through. And I actually kind of made I actually did a bunch of shit today because I was like because I knew we were going to record tonight and I was like, well, I, I should like. I was like, I should do the Marsh Cave before I before we record because I've been just been I've just been walking around leveling up, getting ready for the Marsh Cave because I've heard that the Marsh Cave is like one of the worst places ever in that game. Oh yeah, you, you want to grind a bunch beforehand. Yeah, so I've just been grinding and I got my guys. I think my guys are at level ten now, so that's good. And they all got and I, and after I beat the Marsh, like once you beat the Marsh Cave, you get a bunch of shit that you can take to another thing and another thing. So I got there's just all these fest sort of fetch quest stuff. Like you beat the Marsh Cave and you get a crown and you take it to this other guy and then he fights you and then you get this other thing that you could take to this person that you saw before to get another thing to take you to this other person that you saw before. So you go back and do all these things that you're like, that you passed on the way to the Marsh Cave, you know. And then you get this special key, this magic key where you can go and unlock all these doors that you couldn't unlock before. So you get all this, all these shitloads of treasure after that and money. So all my guys like got completely upgraded. After that, so I got to that point where everybody's a lot stronger now, and uh, I found all that shit. There's there's a similar thing in Dragon Quest like that too, where like you get, like in those first few Dragon Quest games, there's like different keys for different doors. So like you get, you know, you get like a silver key and then a gold key, and you know, and then you go back and get all these treasures that you couldn't get before. It's kind of like that. But the one, oh, right. the really annoying thing, and that's in the annoying thing that isn't in Final Fantasy that's in Dragon Quest. Is like there's no warp spells in, in Final Fantasy. I know there normally isn't, but that's kind of something I've relied on from Dragon Quest that I really miss. Like even Dragon Quest One had that had like a spell that you can do to warp back to the town. So like if you get stuck out somewhere, you know, and you're about to die, you can warp back and not, you know, not get killed, not lose your progress. Well, the Dragon Quest, you actually don't lose your progress. You just lose your money if you die. But in, in Final Fantasy, you do. And actually, a weird thing that I found out about NES Classic while I was playing Final Fantasy, and uh, you know how, like, when you do a game save, it keeps your time on there? You know, like when you do the save state? Yeah. Well, in Final Fantasy, you know you can save, like, into the actual game and start the game over. So, like, every time you go to a hotel, it saves for you. So, like, there was a time where I, like, went to a hotel, and I saved, and then I fucked up, but I didn't do a save state. So I went back and started the game over again. And when you do that, it restarts your time. So if you're going by a whole thing like how much have you played, it kind of fucks you up there. Oh, so now it's saying zero on it? Yeah, yeah. So if oh. you start so if you start a save from the game, from the actual main menu of the game, your next save state will say zero on it. It'll start oh. that whole time over again. So that's kind of confusing if you're playing stuff like, like Final Fantasy. Whereas, like, yeah, there's been times where I've saved on the game, but I haven't saved yet on the save state, and I need to go back to where the save in the game is, and that resets your time. So you have to remember which one is which. You know, it's kind of it's kind of goofy, but it's yeah, it's a weird it's a weird thing on there, which I notice, which kind of so like whenever I do that, I try to get rid of all the ones that have the bigger time, so I don't so I don't forget get which one is yeah. Yeah, so I don't accidentally delete the one that says less time now because now it says less time. So, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, now your new save says less time than the other saves that have more time. So if you hadn't played in a while and you don't remember which save it is, you know, you may forget that the one with the lower time is now the is now the one that has more time in it. Yeah. See, see how that can be get confusing. <laughs> Maybe that's part of the whole. That's where the locking thing comes into play. Like you'll put your recent save on and then you lock it. And then you'll yeah. always know that's. I guess that would help you. Yeah. Well, and it's also like, yeah, so you don't accidentally move it or delete it. But yeah, I just figured that out. Like anything that has a save in it, if you go back and start from the game, your time restarts. So that kind of pissed me off when I first noticed it. I was like, what? I had a system here. But now I've, I've gotten used to it. But it's, it's weird. It's just a weird quirk that, uh, nobody, nobody has mentioned anywhere. And I just kind of randomly run into it with the Final Fantasy stuff just because of the nature of it. And for that, you know, for that, I don't really need a save state yet in it. I'm not really to the point of it, I guess. There's, I mean, I guess like if you're like for the Marsh Cave and stuff like that, you could do that. But once you're in there, you know, if you don't have the shit that you need to be in there, you're going to die regardless. So that's kind of like, there's not really a point where there's like a boss that I needed to save state before. I don't know. I didn't feel like there was a spot where I could like really screw up enough where I needed to save state there. Mostly I would just save state, you know, 
in, in towns or whatever, like after I did the regular save. But there was one today, like I, I saved on the game and then didn't save state. And I got to a point where I got messed up because I had just gone to the, I, I just went to the marsh cave and I got the treasure in the marsh cave that I needed. But two of my guys died on the way out. So I only had two guys left and I was trying to get back to the town that was by the marsh cave and I got attacked by these ghouls. There's like these ghosts basically that paralyze you when they attack you and they don't take, they don't take a whole lot of life away from you. But I basically had this thing where like both of my guys kept getting paralyzed over and over and over again and I couldn't attack. So like I was slowly, slowly, slowly getting killed by these ghouls because I could not attack them. And they were basically taking like one hit point of damage away from me every time, but I couldn't do anything because every time I would get, cause I would get paralyzed and then I'd like get healed from being paralyzed and then they paralyzed me again directly after that. So like there was no way I could get out of it. So thankfully I, thankfully I, I had like used a tent before that and every time you use a tent you save automatically. So I had to go back to the actual game and start from my save and just run away from them when they <laughs> when they attacked me last time so I didn't get para- get stuck in this paralyzed loop but yeah the game's crazy it's uh it's much it's much harder than dragon quest i think Dra- or final fantasy 1 is because if you die on that you lose all your saves like you you just go back to the to the you know to the title screen so hopefully you'd save before that but i'm having fun with it i mean i've never really beat that game all the way so that's what i've been striving for to make make it through Final Fantasy. Well, that's a good reason to play these things because of how they're set up. They're more sure. like, you know, and, and I don't know if you've gotten like super frustrated with Final Fantasy, but I've gotten really frustrated with Zelda. And I'll just be like, all right, I'm done. I'll just stop oh, playing yeah. it. I'm not going to let it piss me off like this. Yeah. Then I'll play like some Excite Bike or something like that, you know, that'll calm me down. Oh, sure. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really gotten pissed off on about it just because I understand the nature of it. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, I just gotta, I just gotta grind more and I just gotta go grind here and not here and not over here. You know, I just gotta, you just gotta kind of figure out where you can go. And I, I like playing old RPGs like that. So it's like, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. It's just kind of, I like, guess, do I, yeah, you've, it's like, you've, it's gotten, like, do your, I, you've you gotten patient with your battles because the battles are really slow paced in those yeah. old RPGs. Well, I played through the first four Dragon Quests, so. I know. Right. <laughs> Even though the fourth one was like completely remade for DS. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, but I, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy the old stuff. Like even when I was, uh, even when I was playing the new Pokemon, I went back and played the old Pokemon for a while too. And I still think that game's really cool. The original one that we downloaded way back when the virtual console one. Oh yeah. Last February. Yeah. Which, uh, if you, if you're ready, we could just take a break and then get into that if you want. Sure. If you, Sounds if good. If you want to say anything else. All right, cool. We'll be right back. So uh, the little little game called uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon came out last week. Two I, games. Uh, well, yeah, two games. <laughs> Pokemon Sun and Moon came out last week. I bought it. I bought it at uh, midnight. I've been fairly busy this week, so I hadn't been able to play it a lot as much as I wanted to. But I I put in I put in a lot of hours. Like I checked. Uh, like I had been playing it a bunch. Like since I got off this shoot, and I checked my time, and I was like, oh man, I already put ten hours in it because it was like I felt like it went from like one to ten in like no time. So it's been I've been having a lot of fun with it. They've changed a lot of stuff in it, which is really good. The uh, probably one of the best things in it is uh, there's no HMs anymore. They've completely got rid of HM, so you don't need HM slaves, like we talked about in our previous Pokemon episode, which is pretty awesome. Oh, right, the Pokemon that you have to make for forget important moves just to do the HM move. Yeah, you know how like you need somebody who knows cut, like you need somebody who knows strength, you know somebody who needs who knows whatever, who knows like surf and fly and all that. Yeah, like those those moves, you know, that help you to get get to places that you can't get to. They've completely done away with that. Finally, like. Basically, everything's, there's all these different islands and there's different island challenges is the way it's set up. I've only beaten the first island so far. I just went to the second island and just started that. But, um, at the end of the first island, I basically got, I basically got a giant bull called the Tauros 
that you basically get a bull that you get to ride on, ride around on whenever you want and destroy boulders. And that's how you do what would be a strength or whatever, you know, whatever would be the HM to destroy boulders. Now you have a big guy that you use. And that's basically how it works. So you could basically unlock a guy that has this thing that you can use whenever you want. And you just go through and find all the secrets. And it's really cool. I like that. They've done away with the gyms. The gyms are gone now. I thought that was really cool. Like another step that they took away. Oh, really? From... Gyms are gone? Yeah, gyms are gone now. There's a... How does... So do you get badges still? No, you don't, or medals actually. or whatever? You, what you get is... um, You get, like, super moves, kind of. You basically get, um, basically, Pokemon-type-specific super moves for each, like, person that you beat. It's kind of like a gym leader, but they're not called gym leaders in this. They're called, like, captains, but each of their sections has, like, puzzle elements involved with it. It definitely... It doesn't feel like a gym at all because you don't actually fight... Like I went basically, I did the normal part. Like the first part is a this uh, the first trial. It's called the island trial. Um, they're called island trials. The first trial that you go to is normal type trial. So you go in this cave with a bunch of ratatas in there, and they're in these different they're in these different caves, and you have to find a certain amount of them in the caves and destroy them. And then you go to the next part, and then you fight a raticade, a giant raticade. And then after you defeat him, then you get this special crystal, which is basically your badge. But this crystal basically gives you a normal type super move that you can use, and you can ha- put it on any of your characters who have normal type moves. So that's the way it works. And then at the end of that level, at the end of that one, there's another trial that you do with fighting type Pokemon, and then you get a fighting type super move, which is like your badge. So like they've changed, they've changed a lot of it around. So it feels it feels really fresh to me, and the and the, the graphics look really good, and I like the everything looks nice. But I thought that was cool that yeah. There's no 3D, right? There is no 3D, but if you remember correctly, even the very first like even Pokemon X and Y had very had only had 3D in the battles, like there was no 3D yep. anywhere, anywhere else. So 3D has always been sparse. Because they know a lot of kids are going to be playing these games. I well, I figured they did it because of like their frame rate, or I also thought maybe they did it because of the 2DS. Because if you remember correctly, the 2DS came out the same time as Pokemon X and Y. It was kind of like a like they yeah. released them together, and you could get like a specific put one with Pokemon. So maybe that's why they didn't do it. People were calling them Pokemon machines. Yeah, because I think they did it because they didn't want people to think they'd be missing out on anything if they bought the 2DS Pokemon version. So I mean, I know a lot of people were saying like, "Oh, this is because it's coming to Switch," but I was like, "Well, but you know, the the 3DS Pokemon's never really had." And he really didn't have a whole lot of 3D in him. And even the 3D that he used in the battles didn't really, I don't know, didn't really work that well. I've been playing mine on my new 3DS. I've heard that there's some troubles with it on the old 3DS, but I don't know because I have not played that version. But the version I have runs really, really smoothly. <laughs> but I did watch... You uh, got it from the eShop, right? Yeah, I bought it from the eShop. I, I downloaded it because I wanted to play it. I wanted to play it at midnight, or I played it at 11. But yeah, I did the preload so I could just start it up because I wanted to play it early. I watched the video showing like the boot times between the both of them where they started both of them at the same time. And it's incredibly slow like to even start the game on the regular 3DS. So if anybody got that version, I guess it doesn't work as well from what I heard. But the new 3DS one works great. It looks, it looks really cool. And I, I like the soundtrack a lot. Like the music sounds really good. There's a lot of string stuff in there. There's a lot of like piano. I've noticed like some, uh, they have a lot of like bongo stuff and like the, in like the uh, battle music and stuff like that. It just, it just seems like a lot more, I don't know, the music sounds a little more detailed, I guess. It's, I've been, I've been impressed. I've been impressed by that. And whenever you see the skull gangs, whenever they come out, there's some sort of like, sort of a rap song that plays behind them while they're talking to you. It's like, yeah, what? It like, sounds like kind of a Japanese rap song, which is pretty funny. That has that sort of has like some grunts and yells and stuff like that. But it has nice, it has nice little uh, stuff like that in there. But I like how they've, I like Isn't how they've kind of like scanner thing on it. A QR scanner? What do you, what do you mean? Well, I thought there's some oh. like mode. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean the picture? The you mean the one where you can take pictures? Yeah, because there's there's a thing called Poke Finder, which is basically kind of like Pokemon Snap a little bit, but you're not like on rails. But yeah, you there's like hidden parts in the game that you can find where you can take pictures of Pokemon and you get graded of on your on your pictures. And the better the higher grade you get, the more pictures you take, the more your camera gets upgraded and you get and you get new stuff. Like I only got to the second level of the camera, so I can just do zooms. But I'm pretty close to level three, but. Yeah, it's just like random stuff where you can take pictures of stuff, and they and they rate you, and they say and it says different funny stuff about whatever you've taken. But that's that's a cool addition. You have you have an interactive uh, Pokedex that like talks to you. It's the Rotom Pokemon who has taken the form of Pokedex, so he's like your buddy that talks to you. I thought the very beginning of it was like 
super tutorial, like because they there's this girl that like basically leads you around through the whole town, and I got felt like that was a little tedious. But once you get once you get past that, you know, it's been fun. I kind of I kind of wish that there were at the beginning of those games there should be like there should be like a question that says like Hey, have you played Pokemon before? And if you say yes, then they don't tell you anything. That's what it should say. And then say, and then it say no, and then it'll take you through tutorials. I think some of the Resident Evil games did that, where they'd ask you like whether you know like how many, how much, how much games you played. I think Resident Evil Four did that. Had like a question at the beginning about that. But yeah, it's been it's been fun. I mean, I, I like uh, like I said, I like that they made it a change of pace. Uh, one one cool thing is like when you, I don't think they did this in the other Pokemon, but in this one, like when you catch a Pokemon, like if your party's completely full, you can still like switch it into your party. And like take another guy out and send somebody else to the box into to the computer box. So that's really helpful because uh, I think on all the other ones you you still had to go back to the Pokemart to get to get your guy out. But now you if you right when you catch it you can throw it directly into your party regardless of how many Pokemon you already have in your party, which is pretty cool. There's also like a there's also like a thing called Pokemon Care, which kind of reminds me of uh, Nintendogs. <laughs> like at the end of some battles, like if you push Y. You'll go into this like interactive mode with your Pokemon where like if they're poisoned, you can like depoison them or if they're like wet, you can dry them off or whatever. But you like sort of like pet them and like feed them and feed them these Pokemon beads that look like candy. And you can and you basically like can brush the dirt out of their hair or whatever. It kind of reminds me a lot of Nintendogs if you ever played that game, like how you like shampoo your dogs and take them on walks and stuff like that. But you don't actually take them on walks. But you can you can do stuff to make them happier, I guess. It's pretty cool. Like if your guy gets like paralyzed or something. There's like a swab thing that you can you can swab him with this thing to make him not paralyzed at the end of the match. So that's an interesting new thing that wasn't on there. And there's some uh there's there's some cool it's it's very like cinematic. There's a lot of cutscenes in it too. And they've kind of like they've put there's like flag points on the map now showing you like where to go, like in case you get lost, which is helpful. Because like I kind of got a little, I, don't know, I got a got a little disoriented in that first island as to where I was supposed to go, but it kind of helped me figure out where I was going next. But it's been it's been fun for the most part. I think I have like I think I have like forty Pokemon already on there that I've caught. It's been a there's been a lot of it's been mostly like original one fifty that I've caught off the beginning. You have Sun or Moon? I, I have Moon. I had to get Moon because I because I had the big fucking bat thing on there that looked really cool. The Luna <laughs> Luna Lala, so it was called. Yeah. Yeah, the bat looked way cooler than the than the lion. And I have the I I picked the I picked the owl, of course, as the starter, the rowlet, because he looked the coolest. Even though the second the uh, second form, like I got to the first uh, evolved form of him, and his second form it looks super. He looks super like a uh, hipster because <laughs> he has like this he has like this sort of comb over thing that's going on. That I don't know. He looks super hipstery. I'm not really a huge fan of his second form, but hopefully his third form looks better. But uh, he's he's pretty strong. I haven't tried any of the Pokemon Bank stuff. Like I haven't transferred anything from from Pokemon Yellow yet. But I did go back to playing Pokemon Yellow for a second to try to you know make it through. Like I was like, I wonder how far I was, and I played that for a little bit. You know, trying to see if I was anywhere close to the to the end. Because if I beat it, I was going to try to transfer some stuff. But I'm not. I don't think I'm new. I don't think I'm near the end on that yet. But I thought about transferring some stuff from X and Y. But I don't know. For most of those games, I like to play. I like to play them with the Pokemon that are offered to you in the game. And then maybe for like some yeah. end game stuff, I'll add other. I'll add stuff later through Pokemon Bank. But most of the time, I don't. Like the only time I did it was in Pokemon Black Two because I got stuck on a gym that I couldn't that I couldn't get past. So I traded some of my guys from Pokemon Black 1 into Pokemon Black 2 so I'd have some stronger guys to get me to the next part because I got stuck for some reason. But that's the only time I've really done that. Most of the time I just try to play the game with with the characters that you have on there. But yeah. I never even played uh, the last set of Pokemon games, so I, I have yeah. Pokemon Y. Yeah, but you didn't but beat that's Y. That's the last one I bought. Besides Blue, which is the DS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how's Blue treating you? Did, do you ever play that? Do you play that one anymore? I haven't played Blue in a while, but it's there. It's a DS. Yeah. How far did you get? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was on something about a boat. There, I was near a boat. I didn't remember that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I would, I, I had like, I have like 40 Pokemon on that too. And I think it's, it said I put about 17 hours into it, the yellow one that I played. But I don't know where I'm at and I didn't check okay. which badges I had gotten. Do you remember a boat? <laughs> Do I remember a boat? <laughs> I think, I, I think, I think I was on a boat at one point. <laughs> 
I honestly don't remember. Like, it, the only part I really remember of that game is like the beginning. We talked about it on our Pokemon episode, but that that first gym is really difficult with the yellow version because I think you fight like you fight like guys that are basically aren't hurt by electricity. So you have to find the specific Pokemon in the wild and level him up to a point so you get this one move that will help you beat the people in the gym. I remember that being a whole thing. But I found a Pichu. That's just in yellow. In the new one. That's in yellow, yeah. Well, that's in yellow just because Pikachu is not strong against anybody in the first gym. So he can't really do much damage to them. So you have to go out and find, I forget which, which guy it is. I think it's like Mankey or something like that. But you have to, you have to find a, what, you have to find a, one in the wild that can gain this type of move that you need to defeat these guys in the first temple on the yellow one. But I have a Pichu in the new one. So that's cool. I found the little, you know, the little baby Pokemon from, uh, Smash Brothers Melee. He's the in first there. first version of Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> But I, and he's like a level, like mine's like a level 20 and I haven't, he hasn't became a Pikachu yet. From what I heard, it all has to do with his happiness level or whatever, or his sense of satisfaction or something like that. So I don't know. I don't know Uh-oh. what that means. It's fine with him being a Pichu for me. I found an Abra again. That's my favorite, you know, my favorite Pokemon, the Abra, the Abra Kadabra and Alakazam. I, I caught one of those fairly early. So it's always good to see those in there. Even though like my, I, he's like my Kadabra, like it, it evolved into Kadabra. And I've, uh, he's fairly high in his level, but he still doesn't have any moves to attack anybody with, which I thought was kind of weird. I figured I would have learned like Psybeam or Confusion by now, but it's not on there. So I, I was thinking about, I was going to look it up for the, for the, uh, Sun and Moon version, but I haven't done that yet. I did some, I did some Wonder Trading. I don't know if you remember Wonder Trading. It's like when, it's like kind of like a grab bag where you like throw out a random Pokemon and then you get a random Pokemon back. It's like a internet trading thing okay. and I, I in the uh, in x and, x and y i got a, had a lot of luck with right with uh with wonder trade i actually was able to catch like i got like all the starters from the original generation i was able to catch all the starters from x and y like through that which is really cool like i got i got like squirtle and bulbasaur and all that shit like from wonder trade but this one all i've been getting is like junk pokemon through wonder trade so Maybe everybody's just playing it like me, where I just throw a chunk of Pokemon in there and hope to get better stuff. But maybe it hasn't been out long enough. But I don't know. I felt like X and Y like worked a lot better than that. But you can still do the online trading and all that. You know, there's there's like some trade stuff that you can do like in the town, but with you know with scripted NPC interaction stuff. But yeah, it's been it's been fun. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It does it does like I said, it feels it feels a lot fresher than the other ones, especially since they switched everything up. So it's kind of cool like relearning it again and you know. Was, but was still with the same. The battles still play the same, but there's different goals now, and there's different ways that you get from one part to another. So that's cool. It's been fun. I mean, I if you're you know if you feel itching to play more Pokemon, you should totally play it. I'm wondering. I'm wondering how the sales of it did. You know, with all the pop- popularity of Pokemon Go and all that, what if more people bought it? Well, I did. I did read something, at least a headline that just said something to, to the degree of uh, everybody got it that waited. It wasn't like the NES Classic; you could actually get Pokemon. You went to the store to buy it. Oh yeah, they, you mean they actually released enough of them? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, yeah, that well, that's good. That's yeah. Speaking of NES Classic, have you have you been able to buy any more? Like, or have you seen any more? Or have you tried like nope. buying them online? Because I thought there was. I've tried. Oh, I've yeah. tried online. Because I thought somebody. I thought somebody said that there was another shipment that released at Walmart, or, or somebody's like releasing them every like couple days or something like that. I tried. A, I got on Walmart at one point, and uh, when they were releasing them, and I got to the point where I had it in my cart. But I, did I talk about that last week? I don't remember. But I, I mean, got to the point where it was actually in my cart, and it let me check out and then it that's what it said it wasn't available anymore oh well i mean you, all you talked about was amazon last week so I don't okay know. no so like i uh i did get on the walmart website um and they were releasing some on at 5 p.m one day and i think it was the nvc group someone on that tipped me off so i went to the walmart and just kept reloading it and uh i actually got to the point where um, i had one in a cart and i put in all my information all my shipping information and my credit card and everything it said the total amount with tax and shipping and all that. Then I just clicked uh, click here to finalize order or whatever, and then it said, "We're sorry, the item's no longer available." Oh yeah, that sucks. And I really thought I had one. It wouldn't it wouldn't let you change it to two. You could only buy one. Yeah, so I that's think why I thought it was legit. Like, yeah, I think they're doing that for everything. Where it's just like you can't get any more than two, or can't get any more than one. You know. But I did see someone posted on NBC that they didn't take it out of their cart. They would just randomly go and click click it. 
and that they actually got it to go through oh. a couple of days ago. So I don't know. They may, Maybe they are just not even announcing it anymore, making them available. But I'm on a list where I'm supposed to receive an email every time they're available. Oh, okay. From Amazon Walmart. or from Walmart? Yeah. Uh, both Amazon and Walmart online. Oh, okay. Are supposed to tell me. So I haven't gotten any notifications from either of them. So if they didn't notify people, then that would be kind of bullshitty because why would they even have that as an option? Yeah, if they're not going to notify you. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering what the next because I know they said they're going to ship more in December, but it's starting to get to the point where I'm like, because I wanted to get them for Christmas presents, but I'm like, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm starting to wonder if I can, well, are they? I'll actually be able. I'm to get curious them. if they're. I'm curious if they're showing up in the uh, Black Friday ads. I I haven't. They they're nowhere to be seen, from what I've read. I mean, I read all the Black Friday stuff that I've they're seen. They're not even in like the but yeah, they're not even in like the flyers to buy them. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm Black sure Friday, they. You know. I'm sure they show them like like they have them, but they don't have them. But there's no like deal. Obviously, it just came out. Not a deal, but just have it listed like in the flyer along with all the other games. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure just curious if anybody is listing them, and and maybe if we're gonna get a huge like r- flush of them, hopefully on Black Friday, that'd be great. Yeah. You you would think. I mean, I'm sure it's it's got to be in the ad for something somewhere. I mean, I know it was in like the uh, you know like the Toys R Us ads that came out, like the the catalogs. Like because I get I get those, like whatever the last catalog was that they sent out with that, it was in there. But that was still before it was out. You know, that's still before it actually came out. So, but I mean, it's yeah. I'm, I'm sure depending on when they printed, I'm sure like they might have printed some of them before before they actually came out. So. But yeah, I mean, it wouldn't. It, it probably isn't going to help. I mean, it's not going to hurt to to go around and look for them still. Yeah, I, mean, if, I haven't been have... asking about them, but I've looked for them and I haven't seen them. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I'm seen gonna... like uh, so the Walmart where I found mine, they actually have like a uh, promotional sort of thing hanging up about them. So I mean, they they must be anticipating getting more at some point, or maybe they already have and people just grabbed them as soon as they showed up. I don't know. I haven't been there when they've been shipped. I guess sure. for that first time. Yeah, I mean, I I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna go out for Black Friday and try to find some deals. So I'll see if I can find anything. But I I don't you know I haven't really heard anything of another shipment. But who knows? I mean, it is Friday and they ship stuff up on Friday. So hopefully, are I'm you gonna try something. to pick up one of those 3ds's? Uh, maybe I don't know. I'll see if I can find one. I thought about going out and looking. I think for it's them. a great deal. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was gonna I don't know. I was, I was gonna see if maybe I could get a couple of those games that are really cheap. Maybe I'll get Fire Emblem or something like that. But I'll but I'll see if I can find. Uh, I'll probably go around to like Best Buy and Target. See see if there's you know see if there's some stuff out. But I'm sure if it's out, then you know people know about it somehow or <laughs> they've already got it. But it'll be interesting to see, and we'll let you know on the our listeners. We'll let you know if we find anything. But uh, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I don't know if I get. To, I mean, I, I don't know of anything else to say about Pokemon. I think I think I have all that. But anything else you want to say before we uh, head out? I know this is a shorter one, but do you feel like you're going to catch them all? Like, are you in that sort of frame of mind? <laughs> I never catch. I've never caught all of them, so <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. I always think it always seems like a cool idea, but the closest I got is I think I had 130 something in the very, very first game in Pokemon Blue, and I still have my cartridge, and it still has the save on it, and I still have like I don't know, like 135 something like that on that one. And that was the closest I got, but I'm just in it, you know. I'm just in it to play the game and have fun with it. I never really, I never really go that crazy where I try to catch everything. I always think about it, but I'm like, yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to see all of them. I just like to see the ones that I like and you know find the legendaries and then be done with it. So it should be fun. Have you caught any shiny Pokemon? I haven't caught any of those either. <laughs> I don't think I've ever caught a shiny. Maybe I, I might have caught a couple on uh, Omega Ruby because I think it was easier to track them in that one. But no, I, I haven't found any. I've just been catching you know regular ones. Someday you're gonna. Have them all. <laughs> I'll be a master someday. You didn't anyway. leave home at the age of nine for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Well, uh, I read somewhere, and it, it makes sense. But the one of the guys who made the Pokemon show, he was like, "Ash can never become a master because if he becomes a master, then the show's over. <laughs> so he will never become a master. Yeah, ever. he's no longer. <laughs> he can never defeat the Elite Four." Because if he does, then he has nowhere to go. He's done. He's done with all of it. Then he has to like retire and become a gym, uh, become like a gym leader or something like that. And that's not a show worth watching. Anyway, that's <laughs> that's been our show, episode forty-seven. 
it was kind of a culmination of a bunch of different stuff. But we promise next week we'll have something a little more a little more thematic. You can email us at nintendomain.podcast at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website, nintendomainpodcast.com. You know, download us on iTunes and whatever other podcast things you use. Give us give us a give us a rating. We need some ratings. It'd be good. And uh, we've been your hosts, Trey Johnson. Jerry Mikowski. But happy Thanksgiving and we'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving.